Hello and welcome to the Philosophy of Probability and Statistics video series. My name is William M. Briggs. Today's talk is the mysticism of randomness. Now what we're going to do uh, to start this off is we'll have a fun little experiment. As I have here, let me do this just right. Uh, all right, there we go. Now, I have a coin, a dime, in one of my hands. Uh, it's either in my right or my left hand. It used to be a quarter, but uh, as you can tell, these videos are being done on the cheap. I can't even figure out how to get my head into the frame as long as, as well as my hands, but we have to live with it. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to guess which hand the coin is in. It's going to be either in my right or my left. Now, let's talk about probability. And what we're going to do to make this a random number before we get to the probability is we're going to call the coin if it's in my right hand a 1 and we're going to call the coin if it's in my left hand a 0. That makes it a number. And if it is a number, it's therefore scientific. We have to be able to put numbers to things to measure them and only things that are measurable are scientific and those things that are not measurable are not scientific and therefore of no interest to us. That's a little bit of scientism for you. We'll expand that in another video. Now, what's the information that you have? You, you have, you know, there is a coin. I'm telling you to accept this information that there is definitely a dime in either my right or my left hand. It can only be in my right and or only be in my left. It can't be in both simultaneously. Now, conditional on just that information, that information and no other information, the probability that the dime is in my right hand is a half. The probability that the coin is in my left hand is also a half. Well, okay, that's the information that you have. Now, if I were to change the information, that probability, if I accept that information, is also a half and a half. But I have additional information, don't I? I know where the coin is. I placed it in my right or my left hand. Therefore, conditional on that information, the probability to me, using that information, is, well, the probability is either a 0 or 1, depending on if the coin is there, or the probability is 0 or 1 in my left hand, depending if the coin is there. So, the emphasis, as we learned last time, is if we change the information, we change the probability. So let's reveal it and let's turn this into real science. There it is, it's in the right hand, therefore we have the number one. We've just generated our first random number. Put that away, we don't need it anymore. Now, randomness. You've often heard about randomness in, um, uh, in, in marriage with probability and statistics. And nowhere is it more important, it is said, than in the randomized controlled trial. So. It, one of those might be a doctor wants to check out a new drug and see if it's better than a placebo. So he'll give a group of patients the drug, see how many of them get better, give another group of patients the placebo, see how many of them get better. And if more people, a greater fraction of them in the drug group, improve or get well than in the placebo group, we have some information that the drug is doing okay. Simple enough. But how do we give this drug to the patients. That is, how do we assign the drug or the placebo to the patients? Well, you're supposed to randomize the patients. Well, what does that mean? And this is what gives the, the, the experiment its authority, its blessing, if you like. So what we could do is, well, the first patient that walks in the door, I could give him the drug. The second patient that walks in the door, I could give him the placebo. The third patient that walks in the door, I could give him the drug. The fourth, the placebo, and so forth until I'm out of drug and, and placebo. And then I can conduct the experiment. But that doesn't work. That somehow strikes people as not random enough. Well, what does that mean, random? Well, random only means, as we just learned with the coin experiment, random means unknown. You didn't know which hand held the coin, therefore the outcome, the proposition that the coin was in the right hand or the left hand, uh, that is to say, the proposition that the coin was in the right hand or the proposition that the coin was in the left hand, was random, unknown, okay? So, but if I just assign every other, it doesn't seem random enough. It's not like I'm giving enough blessing to this experiment. So what? 
the doctor will typically do is come to a guy like me, a statistician, and say, listen, I need you to build me a randomization table. Go to the computer, generate some random numbers, and I'll use those numbers to assign the patients to either the drug group or the placebo group. Well, okay, I can do that. I can have the computer generate some numbers for me, just as we generated this very first number for us. It's no problem. Um, but it's this number generation that seems to have this mystical property about it that uh, uh, is what we're going to talk about. But before we get to that, and it's very important, I want to talk about the outcome of the experiment. Let's suppose that I went ahead and did this. I've generated all these numbers from the computer, these random numbers, and there they are. And we've looked at the difference uh, in, the, in the rates of getting better, healing, whatever we want to call it, for the drug group and the placebo group. Now what will happen is, it could be that the rates are identical. It's not likely based on the information that if we have a large number of patients, we'd have to have exactly the same number in both groups, so that seems unlikely, that they'll both get well at the same exact rate. But they may get better at a rate such that the drug group gets better just slightly at a higher rate than the placebo group, suppose. Okay, some people will then say, well, the drug group didn't get better because of the drug the cause of the slightly greater increase in wellness in the drug group was not because of the drug. The causative action was not the chemical and the biology and all that. Instead, it was caused by chance, they'll say. And in fact, the entire frequentist idea of hypothesis testing is based on this idea that this thing out there called, called chance, which is an entity, apparently, a real living thing that causes randomness, will cause things to happen. Well, of course, there is no such thing as chance. Chance isn't real. Chance isn't a person. It isn't an entity. It isn't a, it isn't a spiritual being. It isn't nothing. It's another way of calling our ignorance or labeling our ignorance because, after all, random is just ignorance. Chance cannot cause anything because chance is not a real physical thing. If it's not a real physical thing, it can't be causative. Therefore, we've already started on the wrong foot when we start talking about chance causing things. And the idea is chance is somehow associated with randomness. And we'll talk about this now in respect to the computer generating random numbers. So what does that mean? Well, the computer doesn't generate random numbers in any sense of the mystical. But in order to do it, what we do is we have a little algorithm. There's several of them that one could use. And it does spit out numbers. But these numbers are entirely deterministic in the sense that once we know what the starting point is of this generator and this very simple little algorithm that pushes the numbers forward one after the other, we could predict with absolute certainty what every number along the chain is going to be. And it's kind of funny now because these random numbers are said to be needed to marry to random variables, random variables. Ran this is where the mysticism comes in. This is where the sort of magic and the smack of alchemy, as Kynes told us about, comes in. Because the variables have to be random variables in order for the math to work out, so it is believed, by both frequentists and Bayesians. You'll read always in textbooks of random variables. Well, what is a random variable? Well, a variable is just a proposition, like the coin is in my right hand, the value of which, given the information we have, is uncertain. If it was certain, it's certainly not a variable because we'll know, based on that information, exactly the, val the truth value of that proposition. So, the math does work out, and it doesn't work out because of the mysticism. But that mysticism is always there, that aura of, uh, of, of magic dust that one has to sprinkle over an experiment using randomness. Now, it's funny about the computers. I wanted to get back to that and, and the last point, is the, what, what, what people will do is they'll say, look at that string of numbers that the computer has spit out. Is that really a random sequence? Well, if, they will ask themselves, the numbers were generated by a certain process, 
the random, the random numbers should look like this. They'll look at the actual stream the computer put out, and they'll look at the stream that they, the hypothetical stream, and they'll say, well, the real stream does not look like this hypothetical stream, the hypothetical stream based on this known algorithm. Therefore, the numbers are random with respect to this hypothetical mechanism. They'll go to the second hypothetical mechanism and they'll say, well, if this hypothetical mechanism generated the random numbers, then the random numbers should look like this and such. They'll compare the computer stream to the this and such and say, well, that doesn't match. Therefore, the, ran the numbers are random with respect to this second hypothetical mechanism. And they'll do this. They'll go down the line of all of these hypothetical mechanisms that are known. Except it, they will ignore the very one process which generated the random numbers. Like Nelson turning a telescope, his blind eye with a the telescope, they'll say, ah, I see randomness. When in fact, it's completely deterministic. All of these processes, like uh, bootstrapping and uh, 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 permutation tests for the frequentists, and Markov chain Monte Carlo, which is used in integration, rely on this idea of these random numbers, the numbers being truly sort of, ooh, they're out there random. Well, the math works out. Believe me, I'm not saying the math is wrong. But the basis, the philosophical basis, is completely false. If I gave you a list of numbers and then asked you to put them into your Markov chain Monte Carlo, your MCMC -MC algorithm, you will get the same answer as if the numbers were generated from a completely unknown process. So that doesn't change anything. But the idea that probability is mystical, that it is strange, that it is unknowable, that, as we saw from our first video when we were doing the divination stones, is a very ancient idea. We have not succeeded in purging it from our philosophy of uh, statistics. It needs to go, however. And we need to embrace this idea that all probability is conditional. This very simple statement, which seems trivially true to most of you, but it has profound implications. And of those, we will discuss next time. Uh, there's lots more information at my website, seen at the end of this video. Thanks very much for watching.